Welcome back, guys, to the PCL. I'm Fawn. I found my way to the desk. No longer in the caster's booth. I'm no longer trapped there. But now I'm here with Kresnik. Yeah, I mean, you were you were locked up. I'm really surprised they they let you out. Oh yeah, me too. Yeah. Actually, yeah. I saw yeah. them holding the door when I was walking by past the green room. But yeah. uh, you you fought your way through, and no, now I, you were I here did. to guide us through some more European PCL action. Yeah, I had to. I had to make sure that I was here to catch this next game, game two, PCL. It's actually really really interesting. We have Vroom Vroom versus Bust Down. Now, what's interesting is that me and Gore were talking about it before. Is that Bust Down lost to Cyclone, but Vroom Vroom beat Cyclone. Yeah. So technically. Vroom Vroom should be able to beat Busto. Yeah, I mean, if you're going purely on on one to ones, yeah, I mean, looking at it <laughs> yeah. on paper, yeah, I mean, you're right. No, you're absolutely yeah. right. Cyclone, a team that I believe just was super strong last season. They're the team that represented this region at LAN, and Vroom Vroom coming in and taking them down, it was actually huge. And so Busto, they they have a mountain to climb. I mean, we don't know exactly what happened in that Cyclone Vroom Vroom match, but right. Busto, I mean, they they better be prepared for this because this could be a this could be a heck of a game. Yeah, I mean, I'm really excited to see what both of these teams have planned for us today. I'm pretty sure it's going to be a very good game, very interesting game just to see overall. I mean, like, Bust Down did really, really well last week in the PCO. Mm -hmm. They did well. They did go down. I believe they lost their first game last week as yeah. well, but that doesn't mean that they're out, and they've already proved that they are definitely a good team and something to be not necessarily frightened of, but a little bit intimidated if you're going up against them. Yeah, I mean, they adapted last week pretty quickly against Effect, and I like right. how this region is going to be, I think, very competitive all throughout this split. If all these teams keep performing like this, uh, it should be competitive, and competitive is what I'm looking forward to. Yeah, same. I mean, game. I'm really, really, uh, really, really excited just for the EU standings for right now. Uh, we're going to look at the map bands as well. Bright Marsh and Frog Owl, Vroom Vroom decided to ban Bright Marsh. I mean, sorry, Vroom Vroom decided to ban Frog Owl, bust down uh -huh. banning. Bright Marsh, and then we get Splitstone and Serpent Beach are banned on okay. both sides. Four bands, all in total, same as always. Now, I, what's interesting is that we don't normally, at least, I've seen Frog Isle banned before. A decent amount. A decent it was, amount. I think it was banned last set as well. Right, exactly. It, it's a very unique map. I mean, a lot of teams don't like playing against that kind of double tank mandated map. It's one of the maps, well, when Triple right. E Pest was playable, always had to play it there, and it's one of those maps where snipers really reign free, and some teams just do not want to play on a map like that, but let's see where they do want to play. We can head yeah. over to the pick and see where we're going to be starting here. Stone Keep. Uh, one of the maps, I, it's like pseudo-standard almost. It's not like a brighter jag, but it's right below. Some teams would almost would give it that that luxury being called that. Stone Keep the vertical, and it has a lot of options for where to play. You can play that grounded mid style. You can play that high ground control keep style. Uh, one of my favorites, actually. I think it's a super flexible map. Yeah, I agree with that too. Stone Keep. They decided to ban the Atlas first, being the one it is that Bust Down decides to go with, followed by the Talus as well. Both bans are gone. Talus, you see that a lot more on console. Atlas, you see that him banned everywhere if you give them the opportunity to ban him. Drogos oh, yeah. is gone too, which is interesting because I don't see people really prioritize the Drogo's ban on Stone Keep. He is picked, but I don't see it happen as often in terms of banning him. Both stone maps are some of his better ones for the Worm Jets play style. Right, right, I mean, right. You can always bring out like Combustible on Frog Isle and maps like that or Ice Mines, but uh, the ability for him to play around the buildings on mid, oh, is, it makes him super, he, he can do a lot. He can actually play around his counters on these maps, right. unlike some other maps. Final ban would be Torvald for Vroom Froom, taking it to uh, a Get standard off, place, but the other damage amp is still open. Genos grabbed by Bust Down and Vroom Froom, doing a, giving us a little, a little console standard magic. Yeah. With a Victor uh, first pick on the second rotation, and we'll, I want to see what they followed up with Barrack, uh, which I believe you, is to deny it from going with the Genos. Right. He, he's definitely the best tank to go with Genos. He does 100%. he does so much damage. 100% Barrack, Victor, just as you were saying, a little bit of console stand, a little bit of console magic right there. Genos is picked on Bust Down side. Willow as well. You don't really see her as much on console either. I feel like she might be a little bit easier, maybe, and this is me saying it sparingly, but she might be a little bit easier to control than some of the other people that we've seen with Superior Movement, like whether it be Eevee or whether it be with Maeve with their quick, uh, just their quick movement. I feel like Willow. Yeah, Willow's not really, other than her flutter, she's not really a movement right, yeah, exactly. character. And exactly. like the, the Fae Flight, honestly, it might be easier to to move with a controller than it is on a keyboard sometimes. It's just that you know th that 360 degree movement could make you a little more flexible in how you go. Makoa closes out bust down over there, so uh, he's oh, he's always going to be good. With Drogo's ban too, having that execute out of the way is going to be really solid. And uh, Vroom Vroom, I, I think they're going to play on the ground. Come on, uh, that, that's that's my guess at the start of this draft. They'll have their Victor probably back on Plat with Grover Ash. The Ash can control the low ground and Barrack Grover on point. I mean, the, they're both going to be poking constantly. That's going to be a, a lot of pressure for Bust Down to overcome. Yeah, 
Ash is locked on Vroom Vroom's side as well, just to give him a little bit of more staying power. The Terminus is picked, something we've been seeing quite often in the PCO, something it is that they just like to pick in general. Makoa, Terminus, and the Leon the being locked as well banners, to, I believe, run. sort of try to contest that victor from at least putting yeah. so much pressure onto Willow. Yeah, definitely. He'll, he'll the ability for the Leon to burst at long range means that the fights are going to be in their favor as long as they take them on an even ground. And I actually think the Come Terminus here, pick is pretty Grumpy good boy. against what they have, because but he's pretty good against Bomb King. He can siphon the Grumpy. He can block those deaths. Right. Uh, and they don't have any strong displacement to burst through his siphon. They don't have the Vortex Grip. They don't have the Dredge Anchor to go through. So there's a lot there for him, I think, in terms of sustain on the point. Yeah, I agree with that too. The Bomb King as well being a little bit, you know, can throw it right over his Siphon, can throw the Grumpy Bomb down, yeah. get that stun, forcing Terminus to really just watch his positioning. Both teams are locked in though. Game one is going to be in the books really, really soon. Let's throw it down to the casters. Thank you, gentlemen. Game one between Bust Down and Vroom Froom about to get underway. Two of my favorite logos, I think, in all of the console league. There's something about the wizard. wizard. <laughs> <laughs> something about the wizard casting a spell that I just dig. It's, uh, it's going to be a fun matchup, though. I mean, th this region already, only through two weeks, though, small sample size, like one of the more contested regions in the PCL, best down in Vroom Vroom, trying to stabilize themselves. Remember, after this week, every team in every one of our regions will have played one another. So you'll get a really good look as, as today unfolds, kind of the, the set in stone one, two, and three, and, and four, of course, after everyone has played one another. So Bust Down and Vroom Vroom fighting for that spot. Now that Cyclone's lost in this region, yeah. it's all it's wide open. That's the thing that blows my mind is is there's a team that beat Cyclone. It's just that, like we've mentioned it in the past, but Bust Down has always seemed like they're on the cusp of doing it. Yeah. But no one's ever done it. And right. so finally having it happen, I think, is the biggest Was it Vroom Vroom? Point. It was Vroom Vroom that did it. So, so I mean whoever wins this is at least for one week going to be the reigning supreme Xbox EU champion. I mean, I guess that means Vroom Vroom is the uh, the favorite in this matchup. Potentially, Styles able to trade one out. That was a bloodbath. Valerian, yeah. Back and forth kills up in the high ground there. Bust down or worse for wear, though, as they're forced back. Good hook from Emmerfish pulls in uh, the Ash there in this case. 63% for Vroom Vroom, though, as they fall back uh, under the pressure of a five man bust down retake. 63% though, like you said, is probably yeah. the most comfortable like cushion that you could get. Like in this kind of scenario, obviously you want maybe a little more on there, but considering how contested that very initial fight was, being able to jump down, get that 63%, you can back off. No one really dies, so you regroup. They're going to come back into it. The problem is, I think, is dealing with this Terminus and now dealing with this Fae Flight since you know she can chase you indoors. Yeah, Pair Doggo opening up the uh, the kill feed here. Legends is able to answer with one back. Aryavan taking uh, the high-flying Willow into the close range here. Keep side plugging away. Finds uh, Legends with the kill. Naiju on the low ground trades out with Dreams as well. Bust down, though, now. They're the ones in the lead with 87%. Good long-range shots from Valerian. And Ninja as well gets a kill onto Styles here. So looks like Vroom Vroom have actually stabilized. It looks like Bust Down for a moment there might win. Yeah, I mean, there were a lot of good kills. I think it was just that moment when Willow wasn't quite able to find anything else, wasn't able to get rid of the Grover, didn't get a lot of poke. Like, it was just, well, I think, three seconds until Dead Zone came up. They threw Ooh. it down. Wow. And much like what Peridago did there, it was just a little too late in their fight every step of the way. Just, uh, just over the left shoulder of Grover there as the Enlightenment. Now Vroom Vroom trying to round this final corner here. Start off very convincingly over Bust Down. Four ultimates ready to go. Only Dome Shield is down. Of Barrage, Whirlwind, King Bomb, Assert Dominance, all that so good here on your final push. If they're able to find a pick. This, uh, this begins to roll downhill very quickly if you're Bust Down. They have a little bit to defend with through time and space. Dreams uh, can certainly hit some of those. Knockback attempt there from Naiju. Oh, the hook off to the side. <laughs> what a weird interaction that was. Emmerfish goes flying in Legends with the opening kill. Naiju at this point is just saying grace to the wall. He's just so happy. He's like, that, you saved me. Yeah. You kept me going. That hook was going to pull me to death, but it was really well done. I do not think I've seen a hook like that connect in a long time. Yeah. So that was really impressive just from that note. Even if it didn't get the kill, it was really, really well done. But with a minute and a half left, thinking about 80% of the way, they hit the yep. choke point in the arch. And they back off just a little bit, but I mean, you have plenty of time and a lot to work with to make this happen. Plenty of time, plenty of space. 
And an ultimate uh, with that namesake as well. Here's, whoo, oh, just through the middle. Actually plugs up on the Grover down low. Doesn't end up finding the kill though. Gonna start dominance into the high ground. Naiju blasts Emmerfish down to the low ground. Styles is the first kill in this one. Emmerfish actually might be thanking Naiju in this case. He was able to find a kill on a ninja in this case. Forced back a little bit. No assert dominance now. Void gripped oh, up so into the good. air within so low. Legends is able to trade out with Emmerfish on the backside. Pair Doggo with the kill in this case. 43 seconds left. Valerian still alive. Room for him looking poised to capture this one. Oh, there's gonna be a King Bomb literally just channeled to pop right in his face. And Dreams, unfortunately, did get taken down right before that, so she wasn't able to do anything to, to impact with this. And while I don't know if you needed the King Bomb, I like it as, like a, I guess, a cherry, like the garnish on top right. of the dish, right? Like, they just made it look pretty as they sealed the deal and found themselves a 2-0. And uh, Valerian there, 7-1-5 on the victor. 1-0-9, of course, uh, for Grover there in the middle of the room for room side. 2-0 over bust down. You know, this is bust down is, is sort of always been in that conversation of, of being right there with with Cyclone, and now it looks like Vroom Froom are, are potentially ready to take this number one seed uh, pretty convincingly. Good healing numbers across the board here. As uh, bust down with fast cap look to get back in this game. And honestly, I think I mean, if you give them one more ult coming into this round, I think they have a, a considerably good chance. But Fae Flight's going to have to go big, and this Ancient Rage is going to have to make a big difference. And missing that hook yeah. hurts more than you think. It's tough. They're able to back off right now. Aryavan in the Fae Flight, doing tons of damage into the Room for Room lineup back there. All grouped up, all forced back. Bust Down are going to get on the point. 4% per tick. Dreams as well is able to grab herself a kill. In this case, it's going to be Ninja who's back at base respawning now. Styles just holding down this point. Vroom Vroom, not a lot of time. I mean, this is the fast cap advantage that you get. Naju's probably going to have to throw a shoulder bash uh, and, and see if there's a touch potential, but it's not. Fast cap's enough to do it and bust down and get their first point. I kind of like the way Vroom Vroom approach that, where it's just like, you can run in. I think Ninja, you know, does run in to try and get overtime, try to get whatever. It's not the end of the world, right? Yeah. You can still go up 3-1 if you defend this. Don't know if emoting right there was the right call, trying to get that vision, but you're not going to be able to heal up. <laughs> the team kind of gets locked down and, and much like last round but I think I guess just more successful yeah. from bust down this time around the Fae flight hits the marks you need it to and it zones them out just the way you want ancient rage is just scary enough that they can't fight the Makoa so it was just the right combination things uh, working out very well for bust down dream still has through time and space ready to go if bust down needed to uh, crack this shell from vroom vroom styles Mitigating a good bit of damage there. Valerian sealing up the last push. A nice triple kill on the victor. Helped Vroom Vroom on their way to, uh, to point number two. Looking for more of the same out of the long, consistent damage that victor can provide. Already dancing around the corner here. There's a good shot on Arya Von Naiju as well. And one, two, three. They all go down one bullet away from death, of course. Paradago sliding away. But Vroom Vroom have found themselves a good defense. I was really thinking it was just just in time for out of combat healing to start ticking up a little bit, but that grenade looked like it might be yeah, able to do curious. enough. And I liked the throw from Valerian, but it wasn't enough to really seal the deal. I mean, right now the biggest thing that's standing out is just the fact that Grover, I believe, is still undying mm -hmm. coming down for him. And that's important for support, yes. but it doesn't seem to be swinging things too heavily in favor of Vroom Vroom yet. Like yeah, it's, it's just not enough. They're, they're trying. I mean, they're making good use of it, but here on the defensive end, I mean, it's kind of like the rest of it, depending on where the team fights, is, uh, the healing, uh, you know, may or may not be super useful. I mean, you can see he has to move forward to help Naiju get healed. Good stun there through time and space. Might find him yet again. He lives. Has to be running. A little bit of extra health there with 2,500 health staying alive. Naiju throws down the assert dominance to stay in this one. Yeah, bark skin level three is just enough to keep him alive in this case through time and space, missing the mark. And uh, well played there from the Grover up on the high ground. 16 streaks, still undying. Actually twice now through time and space is plugged, uh, Grover. But uh, zero out of two has resulted in a death, of course. All I can think is that 225, like seeing his health pool at 25-25 is weird. Just yeah. in my eyes, like it's just not a number you're used to seeing. Everything ends in a zero. Right. And it's either a 50 or a 100. Like that's, it's, that's my so philosophy 25, on like TV volume. If you leave it on anything other than a zero or a five. Yeah, then you're doing something wrong. <laughs> but I guess technically they're leaving it on a five. It's just weird because it's a 25. Like it's like the, the one fourth area in right. there right. in a game of hundreds. But that 
what, extra 125 health? That's yeah. what he's getting out by every single time. And then you just pop your healing and you're like, cool. All right, that wasn't close at all. I'm just gonna, you know, I'm just gonna walk over here. A little here. shaky in the knees, <laughs> right? <laughs> Nothing happened, guys. You know, <laughs> one, one long range Leon shot will do it. Hasn't done it yet though. Two zero fifteen for Vroom Vroom and uh, making good use of it. Still healing numbers in favor of Dreams on the bust down side over there. Still, in my opinion, one of the better supports in the PCL. Certainly uh, putting her name out there. Lots of good cleave damage onto Bust Down right now. They have to burn some ultimates. Ancient Rage from Emmerfish is going to try to keep him alive right now. He's trying to run down anyone from Vroom Vroom. Forced to shell spin his way out of there. No kills just yet. King Bomb might change that. He might find the back end. He does get a couple of stuns, but no kills. Emmerfish still alive until Valerian makes good on a few shots. Now Legends looking to run down the rest of Bust Down. Vroom Vroom could win the game with a successful cap. I mean, being able to get this kind of zone at the very beginning is going to be solid, but they weren't the ones standing on the objective. Bust Down does get 46% during all of that, just in the hecticness that it is. Styles finally gets burned down, so it opens the door. But Vroom Vroom kind of starting from a deficit, and now with yep. a Fae Flight, they could still turn this out around. Yeah, they just might. Arya Vaughn using too much of that verticality, hanging out in the uh, the keep side still. Going to plug away at Naiju here. Doesn't have too much support. Void Grip might just seal it. Emmerfish able to find that one. Styles is going to take up the mantle of point tank right now as they're starting to garner a little bit. Still have fast cap, 4% per tick. Room for room, need to get in, get a touch. It's going to be Ninja, the bowling ball, who gets in there. A little bit of shielding to open the door. Valerian as well with a kill onto Aryavon, making a double kill for the victor. Valerian might just seal this game. Just trying to do whatever they can. Shots are going to be coming down. That was a really good oh. reanimate to keep them going yeah, wow. for. And through time and space, is going to tear through. But as long as they can burn Styles, it's going to at least maintain their control a little longer. Bust down, now fighting from the point pair. Doggo still alive, Emmerfish forced back, Vroom Vroom. 42%, they just don't get a touch on it. Pair Doggo with the double kill on the Leon. Turns that one around, 3-2 for, uh, for Vroom Vroom still. Looks like they might be in a position to end the game, but Bust down, well fought back. And they finally killed the Grover. <laughs> That's where my eyes went It's to. that extra help. They, they get that little bit of mo like momentum off of the point, and Beautifully played again. Like, there was, what, two, three members, I think, of Vroom Vroom that were still within touching range of the objective, but it was just a perfect zone into the perfect last little 99 to 100 yeah. as they come through, and well, they get themselves a little bit more control. And you kill the Grover. Again, cherry on top, garnish on That's the right. dish. This makes it a little more delicious of a victory. And uh, They're looking to tie it up now. I mean, Vroom Vroom has been in control of this game. For most of it, Bust Down have fought their way back in. Assert Dominance could seal up a couple kills. Dreams, unfortunately, gets the banners dropped on her. Legends with the double kill. Naiju off to the <laughs> side. And Emmerfish goes off. <laughs> Legends with the triple kill. And this one, Valerian adds one to top it all off. Good start to this defense from Vroom Vroom. And what I love is that I think there were there were three forms of knockback yeah, that, that, that they were going for to make sure that Makoa didn't stay up there. They used the poppy bomb, which I assume is what gets the kill. Maybe he just hit him after Ash knocked him off with a kinetic burst. But then the shoulder bash as well. Like yep. literally everything was thrown into that corner just to make sure there was no chance he climbed back up. It's uh, one way to deal with the Grover. Just knock him off the map and uh, works out this time. Or uh, uh, Makoa, excuse me. Works out, the, I guess, a Grover, too. But, hit him as uh, hard as he can. Hit him as hard as he map. can, yeah. The uh, gravity a little bit more effective on the giant turtle. Cardago sealed up the mid fight with a nice double kill. Looking to try to close out this uh, this round, tying up the game in favor of Bust Down. Ultimate starting to come online for the blue side through time and space from Dreams. Going to get used, going to find Legends this time. Been such a saving grace, that Bomb King for Vroom Vroom. Now you don't have it. Ash solo as well off to the side. Styles getting a kill on a ninja. Shoulder bash in. Pair Doggo finds the kill. Vroom Vroom down to two final members. Valerian trying to turn anything around from the high ground here. Payload's getting very, very close. Looks like one final last ditch effort. Legends very deep right now. Void Grip serves him up on a silver platter. Emmerfish is going to be the one to secure that kill. Down comes the stun. No kills on the back end of it just yet. Overtime will begin here. Let's bust down and look to tie this game. I mean, they're incredibly close. In fact, it's going to be able to go in. I mean, once you have Barry drop down, unfortunately burned, I think, faster than he thought. And I think you could say the same thing for everyone on Vroom Vroom. They weren't thinking it was going to happen that quickly just because of it. And this, I believe, is going to be where his triple kill was. One onto Dreams, one right there. The poppy. It does, does Poppy, but it is a little bit of knockback. It's a little bit of both. Column A, column B, That's everybody right. had it, had some something to do with that kill. <laughs> Bust down, tie up this game. Slash lines. 
not really in their favor outside of maybe Perdago and Aryavan. Vroom Vroom Valerian pulling the damage weight as well. Two and three, of course, in favor of Bust Down on the opposite side. Legends. Honestly, I love seeing Bomb King, Gore. I, I love seeing Bomb King, uh, the triple kill, double kills. I think Legends has uh, played it pretty well. I think it's the perfect, this is actually a game where it's the perfect showcase of Bomb King can single-handedly win you a fight, and yeah. sometimes Bomb King can do nothing in a fight. And it just depends on how much pressure gets put onto him, how well he's dealt with immediately. I mean, right here, you notice he's pushed back just because yep. of the Faith Flight. And so far, hadn't been able to do too much, but since it's 3-3, no comeback mechanic, there's a little more time for Vroom Vroom. Oh, talk about pressure. Do not come anywhere near me, says Aryavan before getting dropped by Ninja. Legends pouring out a good bit of Bomb King damage as well. Once that Siphon falls, I imagine Styles will as well. Reanimate is ready. Going to explode. No kill on the back end of it. Maybe a little bit of damage onto the Ash. Actually, might be just enough for Dreams to pick up the kill. It's a one-for-one -one trade as Bust Down now are fighting from the point. They have 66%. Vroom Vroom are going to have to retake to try to extend this game. I admire this Terminus' control. Seeing four charges makes you just want to hit the left trigger, just be finding whatever you can in terms of damage. Right now, it's going to be a King Bomb rolling in. Dreams does get rid of Ninja, so they don't have as much point tank pressure on the side of Room for Room. Yeah, wow, double kill from the Genos. Might just seal this one up in favor of Bust Down. Ancient Rage is up as well as her dominance from the high ground. Naiju so low, he's going to get hooked out, killed off by Emmerfish here. Barrage could be a saving grace from Valerian, but now Grover's gone. They're going to have to throw bodies onto the pile here. It's going to be one after another. Dome Shield maybe pulling something back here. They're just going to stand on it. Overtime's going to expire. And a 3-1 turnaround for Bust Down wins them game number one. They dealt with that Barry in the best yeah. possible way. Also, I just realized we're wearing each team's color, so this is going to be great. Either way, it was just we're opposite every right now. single time Barrick came through, yeah. he got blown up, and that was the biggest thing for me. Is just He didn't get to have his presence no. on the point. That dome shield at the very end didn't quite seal what I think he wanted it to because they were like, cool, we're just going to walk in and I wasn't paying attention. It. Was was the dome shield ready prior in that fight? It, it must not have been if, yeah. he, if he didn't use it. I guess I was just kind of a last ditch. Finally, my dome shield <laughs> is up. I'm going to use it here. It. Uh, it didn't work out that time around. Good fight back from Bust Down. This, uh, as of now, I guess technically a one versus two matchup here. Both teams looking very, very good. Pair Dago topping the damage charts for Bust Down, 101k. Aryavan, though, lots of good Fae Flight uh, usage in that game. Lots of good damage out of the Willow and helps Bust Down win this one. I think the 169k healing, though, coming down from Dreams really yeah. helped seal the deal. You can see, like, Cauterize is kind of scattered throughout the builds there for right. Bust Down, yeah. but it affects Grover a lot harder in my mind than it affects Genos. And so you could see as the game went on, that healing kind of started to separate itself and Dreams was able to kind of step up. Also, probably the most through times and spaces I've yeah. seen a Genos hit in a single game in a long time. I think that's Dreams probably hit the most through times and spaces with the least amount of kills resulting <laughs> right? from those through times and spaces <laughs> that I've maybe ever seen. But that's the only most happened. amount of clinching, though, from that's the right, That's right. The Grover forced back so many times. Uh, Dreams, you know, I say it time and time again. I think she's one of the better supports in this league. Not only doing it with through time Ooh. and space, you see Grover there. Would have been a double without the uh, the extra healing card on that one. That one goes just wide, but uh, it's just a damage presence. I mean, I'm going to turn over here, toss an Astral Mark up, turn over here, get a kill. I think a double kill seals this one up. There it is. And uh, having that extra damage presence from a support is so important. And it opens up the door. I mean, that's part of the reason we've started to see some teams as well trickle towards Furia, where it's yeah. like, Furia's healing, yeah, it's not going to be the best healing, but when she can kill with you, it's like, okay, yeah, you're a little worthwhile. Like, we're yeah. going to just five-man aggro and have some healing on the side instead of hoping for sure. something like a Ceres, where it's just all healing and no kills. Well, I'm very excited for this set, Gore. If nothing yeah. else, maybe five games on the platter. Very close matchup. Game number one, though, goes away bust down. Game number two, right after this. Alienware, the official PC provider of the Paladins Console League.
Welcome back, guys. After a game one bust down, taking it over Vroom Vroom on Stone Keep. What started to be a very, very interesting game in Vroom Vroom's favor. Mm -hmm. Currently in 3 1. And then it just got reverse sweep bust down, ended up clutching that game out, taking it over Vroom Vroom in a very convincing manner. I think it's just the power of the late game. Because yeah. the late game composition that Bust Down had, once the wreckers came online and everything else, Terminus kind of has an advantage there. I mean, you can't wrecker a siphon. Yeah. The siphon's going to last the same amount of time no matter what. And Barrick and Ash are, are pretty reliant on their shields, being able to hook Ash out of the assert dominance in the final fight. I mean, I feel like late game Bust Down had all the answers. Right, exactly. And I feel like it just ended up coming out to be in their favor overall, clearly, because they took game one. Ice Mines being the second map going into game two. Now, this is very, very interesting. You see people start to play on this more and more, and I believe it's because mm -hmm. I feel like people have just gotten accustomed to it. At first, people didn't really like playing on it for what it is that I know, and then I feel like maybe now people have grown into being able to play on this map. Well, there was a recent, I, I say recent, I think it was almost over a year ago at this mm -hmm. point, but uh, the changes to Ice Mines that they did that opened up previously, I'm not sure if, if you, I think you, pl you played then, but those, course, gates, yeah, those gates when they didn't open right, right, right. on mid, that map oh, was right. this map was a lot oh, harder right, to play right. You're so right. You're so because right. of the zoning. You're so right. The zoning was significantly easier. And now that people have had time, there was still that initial after the change. People are like, "Yeah, but it's ice mine." Right. Yeah. But, <laughs> course, but now, yeah. but now people have have right. grown accustomed to it. I think it's it's coming. I don't say it's standard, but it's definitely being picked up. And Vroom Vroom, uh, they just do not want to play against a single damage amp today. I wouldn't be shocked if they first picked Tyra, to be honest. Yeah, <laughs> after after I mean, those bans, but we'll have to see. Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't be a, it wouldn't be a bad first pick on this map. I mean, she be. was good even before Hunting Party. We, on this map, she was good before any party was even super meta. Right, yeah, that's in true. Game, Two bands beyond this pick first on Vroom Vroom, but no they give her the, the potential of having double damage amp. Mm -hmm. Genos, Torval, and even without the double damage amp, they just don't want to deal with damage amp regardless, yeah. especially since his gun is picked so commonly on console. Victor Talis goes down we as well with a double lock in for frontline. Barrick, Makoa on ice binds as well. You're going to want a lot of staying power on this the map. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And Barrick is the best, I think, self sustaining tank. His ability to use the the healing station, the bowling ball, the failsafe, all of that to keep him up. It's really good. He, can, he doesn't have to be stared at by his healer. Uh, Genos being gone means it's going to be a little friends. worse, but that's a good Grover composition, I think. True, I true. think that's a good composition to have a Grover with, and he is very good on this map because the, the part that matters, the mid fight when it's 3-3, three, three, right. uh, the Grover's going to be able to heal all of that. It's a very it's compact nice fight. Oh, they took it away. Before, they took it away. Vroom Vroom clearly aware of what uh, of what Bust Down's team comp could be yeah. the potential. It has more so is what I should say. And I was just about to Perfect say, maybe they could pick charge. up a Ying. They do <laughs> want staying power. I didn't mention that before, that Barry McCullough offer a lot of staying power to the team fight, which is Dome Shield, Ancient Rage. Yeah. Having Illusionary Rift could double their chances of being able to stay on point. Yeah, another big part of it too is that Ying is one of the few supports that can dismount right. through that through the gate. Uh, after a patch, after the patch that fixed the uh, dragon going through the gate right. that used to be an like you could not shoot through it now that I you can King Geno is way up in priority because right. getting those dismounts on a map where positioning on mid is so important it's huge and and her value there is is almost impossible to contest Willow following it up uh, a character that can zone very well with her dead zone seedlings uh, just an all around solid pick and a Nara Khan coming out for Vroom Vroom I, a pretty similar Nara Khan Grover I think we saw last game as well and it, it's right. good Gro Inara needs the sustain and Grover doesn't have if full sustain but Khan kind of supplements uh, the Grok actually being locked. Now, I can understand this. There's a lot of situations in which, because of the Grover, they're going to have to group up a lot. So that means that in a lot of situations, they're going to have to at least stay close to Grover yeah. or at least be in, not necessarily line of sight, for his healing. But regardless of that, both teams are locked in. We are ready to go. Game two about to be in the books. Take it away, casters. Thank you, Stefan. Unlock the Grok, says Bust Down, and we're going to get to take a peek at it this time around. We swap sides. Bust down, though, taking game number one. Ice Mines is where we're going to do battle for map number two. Not not always a 4-3 from what we've seen yeah. recently in the PPL this last I've week. Had to two of the fastest. Team. Yeah, right now it's potentially maybe faster than what we're used to seeing. Uh, Maelstrom Grok is what it looks like for now. Tell me, tell me a little bit about Grok, Goro. How are you thinking he's going to do here? I like Grok. I like Grok on this map. I like Grok <laughs> with what they I like. The only thing that would make it better is if they if Barrick and Ying were on the other side because then he has way more targets to bounce off of. But Grover means they're going to be grouped up a little bit more. Anar is pretty slow. Like You have a lot of people you can bounce it off of. And Maelstrom, especially on console, but just in general, is it's a lot of damage. Like You will underestimate how much damage yep. Grok can pump out. And this is going to be a good potential for him. I just don't know if they're going to be as grouped as he wants for them. 
to be able to find all of the damage. There's some good, uh, some good bounce backs up there already. Mario right, Yvonne holding down this right-hand side here, not under too much threat from the uh, the open room right next to him at the moment. Room for room opting for this kind of backstage area. <laughs> like that, bust down, turn tail, and start running away. No health on any of them. Naiju might be able to clean the house here if he turns the corner and looks the right way. He's going to elect to look for the, uh, the Makoa, first of all. Legends finds the kill onto Dreams as the Ying is running away. And there you see it, bust down. Just got a little too poked out there. Couldn't run away quite fast enough. And at 72%, that's got to be point number one for Vroom Vroom. Yeah, it's one of those moments where Bust Down, they didn't necessarily outright lose until that final moment, but they had a lot of members stop paying attention to the objective. Mm -hmm. And once that happens, especially on Ice Mines, you tend to lose the amount of control you might have, right? You lose the Willow, so you don't have anywhere near the pressure there. Grok can do a lot of damage on his own, but I feel like he's best supplemented with somebody. Right. I, honestly, I think they'd be happy if they had like a Genos here as well, just to be able to kind of boost him up. But like, you're looking at, I would argue, lower damage numbers coming out from Bust Down. They have to win off the control of the McCullough. Uh, unfortunately, for that point, McCullough kind of got shredded at the at the uh, the midpoint in that last fight. Room Froom, trying to kick down this door, Arya Vaughn. The uh, Maelstrom's going to try to turn something around, get a few damage ticks in there, nothing really on the back end of it. A little move speed for uh, for his team, maybe. Pertago forced out. Good long-range shots from the high ground here. He's going to get aggressive now onto Valerian. No kills, good healing. Room for room is forced back, but the free-firing Vivian, make it two, make it three for Legends. He can do it on Bomb King, do it on Vivian just as well. It's a payload rounds, maybe the final corner. Just waiting to see if Ying is going to come out. Just enough nope. to be able to find that damage. She is uh, going to stay safe, about as safe as you oh. can get. And a nice hook to be able to get rid of him. But it's not going to be able to find the kill. Yep. Yeah, the shield from Legends. Keeps the Vivian alive here. Ninja from Vroom Vroom able to get the first kill here. Payload so very close right now. Bust down at a 4v5 disadvantage until Barracks able to get back into it. No ultimates flying just yet for Vroom Vroom. Forced back. Still a minute left. Emmerfish. Saving Grace kill onto Naiju, and that is going to be the sign to turn tail in this case. Three ultimates, maybe to really, uh, really knock this door down, bust down with plenty to defend with as well. Yeah, that illusory rift definitely helps. Just make sure you keep your tanks alive. That's honestly at the tail end as when they're they've already broken through the base. They're five to ten feet from converting. The only thing you really have going for you, it's not finding kills. It's just can we keep our tanks alive? Because at that point, right. as long as they're there contesting, you have something to to stand on, something to fall on in the case things go wrong for any of the DPS players. But now you're kind of in the position where you use, I want to say, one of your trump cards. It's going to be at 35%. It's going yeah. to be okay, but I don't know if it's going to be enough to, to maintain for the next 10 seconds. How much do we want? Good hook in on a ninja is going to force the Inara back, back to base after That's the good. damage comes through. Bust down with zero seconds left. Overtime likely expiring here for Vroom Vroom. Good fight, but just a little bit too little, a little bit too late, unless maybe a miracle play with that hook might just seal it up as well. <laughs> that was a really good shield. I was wondering, once the shield came out, I mean, we've seen like too many Makoas not quite be able to kill yeah. off a Vivian today just because of that shield, but it is still going to be the control coming down. Legends being yanked off the high ground. If he's still up there, I think you start to see this shift maybe a little more in Vroom Vroom's favor. And again, that, that hook is going to be essentially live or die. We have the midway damage charts here. 40k for Arya Vaughn on the Grok. So at least finding some good damage yep. numbers is, is the Grok early on. But the uh, the Vivian, just too much potential. The problem is, and Grok fits this. Victor used to fall into this slate for me, but they, they've changed it since then. Or not they haven't changed it. It's just people have been able to convert the kills. Right. And it's just Grok gets a lot of poke damage. And it's it's making those kills. That right. is the issue. I think with Willow, he could probably do a lot more. Like he's just, I'm gonna get him low. You clean him up. Whatever whatever happens that way. But it is very much. Can I get the damage out there? Right now, the answer is yes. Again, he can bounce it off the Inara. He can bounce it off for little Warders Field. Everything that you want. But you're gonna need, I think, a little more coming down. Like the two two and four is a good slash line. Yep. The damage number is good. I need to see Paradago step up to the plate as well. I mean, good damage numbers for Paradago, but maybe a little bit extra to be hoped for. Bust down, good defense ties this one up. 
Room for room. I mean, you know, you, you feel comfortable in game one. You're up 3-1. Then you let three straight go to bust down. Got to be a little frustrating, but convincing already in the first mid fight here. They got the first payload. Couldn't convert it despite it being so close. Ooh, Ooh. overpower. Just wide. Tempest as well is going to start ripping through here, as well as the Ancient Rage. They want to win this one quickly. Seismic Crash not able to come out from Ninja just yet. Emmerfish forced to spin away. Paradago, that's what you asked for. You get a double kill from the Willow and able to stay alive. Aryaban gets kill number three in this fight. Good hook. Might just seal this one up. Bust down. Convincingly win that mid. That, it's one of those things, <laughs> if you hit that overpower at the beginning, that fight doesn't happen that way. And that's just hit or miss. He missed, and it fails the entire team overall. That 90% should turn into 100. Really, really good reaction times from Bust Down. Three ults, all movement speed enabled. They just rush straight down the throats of Vroom Vroom to make sure they knew it was up. And that's how you turn a fight around. That's or right. just win it. <laughs> you just, just win the fight, get the kills, and that's uh, what's, what Bust Down do here. Looking to add point number three with a successful push here. Always got to be careful running into a, a Sentinel firing Vivian, though. Ninja, some good shots on the Styles as well. Might force back Bust Down just for the moment. Looks like uh, that's exactly what's happening out here. So now we'll get to look at Vroom Vroom, what lineup they bring. I mean, uh, fighting into a Vivian, fighting into a Leon on the defensive end. Not going to be too fun for Bust Down. And this is actually one of the best places, I think, to find your first hold. And admittedly, for Vroom Vroom, this is a more defensive lineup in my mind. I feel like Bust Down does better if they get aggressive. A lot of their champions sure. excel when they're aggressive. But you don't, and, and specifically around a point fight, they're not going to do as well when they get pushed onto a, a defense, right? Last round was very, very solid from them. Whereas Vroom Vroom, it feels like they are just literally a shield. And you are trying to figure <laughs> out how to break through and break down that shield. A wrecker. Gore. True. <laughs> just everyone by wrecker. Actually, Wrecker's not the worst item to have. You I have a couple. Two of them do have it. As much as that was a joke, it is going to be useful to help deal with the Khan, as well as the Vivian. Perdago uh, uses Faith Light here, finds the kill. Good shots there. Tempest as well. Double kill for the Willow as they try to force back Bust Down. Or force back Room Room, I should say. Maybe one more. Perdago getting so aggressive. I think that's four kills out of this, out of this fight mode. Three out of four. Vroom Vroom here, just bust down, uh, force back into their base. So obviously that pause was Paradago opening the stream, hearing yes, me right. say I need him to be more aggressive, see a little more out of him, and then immediately going, all right, Second clapping his hands together, getting right back on the controller and proceeding to tear through Vroom Vroom any chance he got. More the same, please. This is the rest of Bust Down here. Legends, though, is able to round the corner, get the kill onto the Willow, just as you're gassing up Paradago, unfortunately. <laughs> Only death, death he finds around the corner there. Naiju getting aggressive. Eight seconds remaining. Payload still moving forward, actually. Styles on the barrack is going to be the one forcing that one in. Aryavan as well getting a kill. This actually becomes so much more interesting now. Just step off for a second. Despite having all the kills, maybe a bit of a, uh, a brain worm in that case. Forced back off the payload and room for room. Tie it up. I just, more moments like this from Willow. That's all you need. Like, even if they don't Very happen, satisfying. if you don't get the conversion, because it was unfortunate death, I think, for him towards the end there, but you control the point easily. Like that, that's all you really need. Six, four, and seven. Like, the slash line isn't prettiest. The damage numbers are still being outdone. And you look at, you know, he had an Arya van. It's four, four, and 11. It's a lot of poke. But for Ice Mines, around the point fight, the way yeah. this map works, sometimes poke's all you need. You get rid of Ninja Zen and Naiju, and there's no one on Vroom Vroom who's going to willingly stand on the point. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not looking down uh, like Rock Barrow and, and smiling. Definitely not. Vroom Vroom are gonna have to do it though. They have five ultimates ready. Bust down. No illusory rift. Looks like they used it to try to convert that one in, and, and it was successful. But somebody stepping off the so payload. Much. Tempest right into the base. Right now, Vroom Vroom all forced back here. Ancient Rage as well starts swinging away for the Makoa here in this case. Only one kill. Ninja Zen first one to drop on the Inara. 12% for both teams. Good hook. Pulls out the uh, the con into a bit of an awkward spot. Pair Doggo firing away here. Gets the kill on the Legends as well. And bust down in the back of just a couple of kills. Force back from from. And that was the moment they needed though, right? Pair Doggo getting aggressive there. Pulled Vivian away from Khan. Just enough that Grok can still shock pulse between them. 
but they're not helping each other. There's not one looking the other way because there's too much on their own plate to have to burn through. And it's just well executed. Perfectly timed to be able to go in and get aggressive there. Bonuses for the fact that he wins the fight, I think that honestly helps even more. But just distracting him there and letting his team have one a two-on-one -on -one fight on one side, you win the 1v1. Nobody else needed to do anything. They, uh, they really want to hit the gas here. A couple kills. Ultimate as well from the Grok. That was a, a perfect scenario. If I'm already Vaughn, I'm rounding the corner. I'm licking my chops. I see five members of Room for Room just kind of chilling next to one another. Lots of good bounces. Lots of good damage for Bust Down in that final fight. They're only going to have Illusory Rift ready at the at this exact moment. Room for Room still with a couple ready. Seismic Crash and Overpower will likely stall this out. Uh, but slowly charging up those ultimates or bust down. Minute and 45 seconds left. Plenty to work with towards the end of this push. Grockult is one of those fantastic things. Because you see, like, Fae Flight, cool. You can fly now and you just shoot down from the sky. Grockult does, like, 20 different things. That's an exaggeration, but honestly, it might as well not be. I mean, it's going to give you move speed. It's going to do damage. It's going to do healing. Like, it just does everything in the book that you need. And admittedly, I like the pop it when you got it. Yeah, and they, uh, they, pop, they pop the Fae Flight. Do a couple uh, kills worth of damage in that case and, and see that one through. And as close as this set has seemed, Bust Down now up 2-0. One win away from taking this set over Vroom Vroom. And it's been like the least convincing 2-0 I think I've seen this yeah, split. where it's just incredibly close. Like that, even that conversion felt like it wasn't yeah. going to end there. Like that yeah, we were felt ready like there was up. another fight. <laughs> like something had to happen there and Vroom Vroom just tripped. They weren't able to come through. Faith yeah. Flight did exactly what they wanted to there and zoned them out. They just forced back all the members of uh, Vroom Vroom here in this case. Good win, though, from Bust Down. Not so much of a fight back. They were kind of fighting from the lead or at least tied throughout most of that game. 106K for Arya Vaughn on the Grok. You know, you mentioned it might be a good map. Lots of good potential there and uh, makes good on it. And it's one of those things. You look at the healing numbers and it does seem to maybe lean in favor of Vroom Vroom. But when you add what Dreams and Arya Van were able to do collectively, it's the same number at the end of the day. And... I think just, again, the power of Illusory Rift that comes through. Paradago got aggressive in all of the right moments. Emmerfish yeah. got a lot of really good hooks. Arya Van, Paradago, and Emmerfish combo aggress into window yeah. and, like, high ground was just perfectly executed for the last two fights, and I think that's what really gave them that point. Well, Gore, it's not often you get to see Grouch, but... Uh do see it here on Ice Mines, and Ari Vaughn played it very well. The uh, the ultimates were timed, I think, uh, good across the board. <laughs> Lots of good uh, shock pulse bounces, as you see there. Totems on point as well. And I mean, it, it's such a utility-based damage dealer in a way. I mean, the moment that ultimate gets hit, the rest of your team suddenly is better off for it. It's just one of those areas. Some of the supports. I, again, I was talking about Furia, I guess, last round. Where, but like, she even does more healing than you're yeah. gonna see out of the Grok. Grok's not there to keep you alive. Grok's there to kill him dead and and maybe save himself on the side. Very akin to like Pip sure. in that mindset, where it's just like, I have a heal. That's not what it's for. Yeah, I mean, it, <laughs> and, and it, it looked great, honestly, on that map. I love love seeing a little bit of Grok in this point. But uh, at least convincing 2-0 I've seen. I would not I would not assume that this set was a 2-0, but it is one game away from sealing it up. Can they do it? Find out right after this. The Paladins Console League is brought to you by Evil Mojo Games, developers of Paladins.
Welcome back, guys, to the PCL. Currently up 2-0. Bust down is very, very close game on Ice Mine still. Nothing too decided. Like, Gore and Dave made a good point. Is that still, even though that things had a... Uh, that things were looking the way of bust down, mm -hmm. still didn't think they were going to cash it in at that very last point. Yeah, I mean, Vroom from have signs of life throughout, and they did have a good defense last time, but just the ultimates, I think, from bust down were just were just too good. It's hard yeah, to deal same. with the Faith Light, and it's really hard to deal with a, with a Tempest from the Grok. The, the speed boost on the Makoa, just running into them on that final mid, just swinging away up there up top. It's it's super hard to deal with. Someone with that much health at that much speed, and then he perfectly rolls out the window right when the Faith Light comes right, in. Right, exactly. Up. It was just really, really well executed by them. I, I loved the idea of the Grok at the end of that draft. Yeah, I mean, on top of that, Grok can be used very, very aggressively as well with oh, his yeah. ultimate boosting up all the movement speed. It's like just speed boosting just everybody into the map, but we're going to speed boost our way right into map three. Dragar Falls is going to be the third map for game three. Now, very interesting. Normally, we see, well, before, it was kind of funny because we had seen Jaguar Falls pretty much first pick every single game yeah. at one point. But this time around, they are coming in third in terms of Jaguar Falls. I believe last set, the last people that was that played, they actually had Jaguar Falls on third map as well. Yeah. When I they mean, fight Flashpoint. It's a good equalizer. Like, if you play two maps that you might not be comfortable with, you're saying, like, all right, man, if we lose on Jaguar Falls, we're not going to beat them anywhere else. It, <laughs> right, right. It really is, good like, a, a, outside of a few strats that maybe are only Jaguar related, like the flankers that work on the flatter maps, mm -hmm. uh, it really is a map where it, it is a skill matchup. I mean, it's about your team rotation, your communication, and being able to play on the objective. So it kind of is, it kind of is like, the great equalizer in that sense. Right, exactly. I see that both uh, characters, Talon, and Drogo's being banned, as well as the Genos and Makoa as well. Coming. Victor is locked in first. I believe this was not necessarily the first game, but this is the first time it is we've seen him locked in first in this specific set. I believe so, yeah. yeah. And and his pressure that he puts on is pretty strong. I, I usually would prefer the other Assault Rifle characters on this map, I think, just because of the range difference, like his, his inability to... He doesn't handle getting pressured as well outside of just getting out of there, you know, just sprinting away and, and crying. We're but his, his damage started. is still overwhelming in comparison. But Willow Atlas, that is a, that is a great start for Bust. Now, Willow's spam on this point is fantastic. And Atlas's ability to just walk at you with Beyond the Veil is, right, exactly. is, is really good. So I, I think both teams started well, but I'm a little iffy on the victor still. Yeah, with how controlled these fights can be, the Inara Grover coming out you as well. They want some of the aggression. Here. The Whirlwind to give Grover CC immunity to just allow him this to run around the point, just being able to rest. give out this consistent amount of healing. The Alice Willow is good as well because of the fact that Willow with all the blast damage, with all the AoE she can put out, the pressure, if and Alice's ready. divider on this map I'm can be really strong as well. Yeah. They decided to lock Grok again though that's what's really interesting to me is that they do want to they opt for this grop once again mm -hmm. and it's going to be good i mean grok into grover kind of they kind of counteract each other grover has all this constant output healing and grok has all this constant output damage sustained on both sides so it kind of evens out but into a nara grover it's really strong and nara right. is it's just she just eats the pulses right, exactly. all day i mean she, she just absolutely takes it and the Terminus with it too, it's decent combo. You Tempest your Terminus into them. I mean, the whole point of Terminus, like his big weakness is, oh, he can't, he can't close the distance. He can't right, get right. in. And if he's going at the speed boost <laughs> that Tempest gives right, you, he's, exactly. he's closing the distance. There is, exactly. there is no, no stopping him at that point. Well, Khan and Bomb King are locked way. in as the final two for Vroom Vroom. One more character is open. They do have both of their front liners. They might go for another damage here. Opt for this possibly. Is gotta, it's gotta be a healer. Yeah, I was like, oh, yeah, oh yeah. One, <laughs> I'm all over the place. Not this is all over the place. It could have been Grok. I mean, true, listen, yeah. listen, I have been on a true, team that has true. played Spirits Domain Grok on this map. We won in spite of it. It wasn't good, right, 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 but right. it could have been played. Ceres and Sed will close it out. A good kind of game-changing ultimate. They don't have too many ways to block it. Con Shield and Narwhal, that's it. Well, I mean, that's it for both teams. Both teams are locked in. Final draft is there. Take it away, beautiful people. Well, thank you. I don't know how I'm supposed to have a bad cast after that gas on this one. <laughs> Game three about to get underway. Beautiful Dave, beautiful Gore on the cast for you here. Jaguar Falls, we get to see a little bit of Saris. 13% pick rate. And, uh, you know, I think that kind of tells the story. Not a common healer. Uh, what, what's your what's your prognosis? What's your medical uh, diagnosis on Saris where she's at at the moment? Well, it was exactly what I was saying earlier, right? Where it's just she does she's really good at healing. Yeah. The problem is, is that's about <laughs> it. She also, like, she's good at keeping herself alive, and she can put out some good damage out there, but the issue is, until recently, like, you could only ever heal a single target. Now it's a little more grouped, so you do expect to maybe see them all kind of pile down, keep close together on Bust Down, but 
I expect her to stay alive. You can see, like, reducing the cooldown, restore soul. She's going to be healing a lot. The cast time of tra sh uh, Shadow Travel by 75%, though, for Veil, just means yep. this. You get out of damage a lot faster in the event that you are in danger. So I expect to see Dreams pilot this really well. Unfortunately, not enough healing is able to keep Arya Vaughn alive here as Valerian on Vroom Vroom finds first kill. That Victor on Stone Keep was something else. Kept them in that game, I think, for as long as they were. Uh, not enough, though, to snag the win. Paradago first kill on this one on the Legends, piloting the Bomb King yet again. Naiju forced to shield his way out of this fight. Vroom Vroom up to 54% already. Another kill on the Paradago. Actually sets Vroom Vroom up in a great spot. Nice grenade. Good control from Valerian, but they do need to get rid of the tanks, and that's going to be the hardest thing. But so far, they haven't had as much pressure, I think, pushing them out. One of the things about Jag Falls, again, is while you can maybe find some bounces from the Shock Balls to go around the corner, there's a lot of line of sight breaks. The same thing happens for Saris. It just makes her healing a little less effective because you sure. can't always see them. Yeah, overpower. Going to seal this one up on Ember Fish. No, Away you go. He's on Seven Beach. <laughs> yeah, he's on a whole <laughs> different map now. Ninja's able to... Get back and away, though. So Ultimate's starting to fly from bust down. They're really fighting tooth and nail for this one. 90% for Vroom Vroom is where they stand. They're going to back off. Seismic Crash might find a couple. Stuns up one. Grok's able to stay alive, stay out of it. Faith Light as well for Paradago, putting him in a great spot for some of that aerial assault. Gets one kill, maybe two around the corner here, but Anara is able to escape. Overtime is ticking away, but bust down. They're on the point, so that will expire here. Legends in the back line. It's able to get rid of all of the healing now for bust down. Valerian still alive as well, and Vroom Vroom, some well timed picks, some good Bomb King play. Gets them point number one. All they needed was someone who could stand on the point. Paradago was in a good position, even able to get two kills right there. It's just doing whatever he can to save the team, right? To keep things rolling up. This Willow had so much work that could be done. And unfortunately, they just weren't able to fully accomplish, I think, what they wanted to. It was enough to scare off Vroom Vroom, though. They just needed the one little foot tap onto the point, though, yeah. and, and capture it. So good for them on Vroom Vroom. <laughs> I think they played it really good well. You, but I feel, like, <laughs> I feel like Paradago was like very close to yeah, turning fully that changing around. that around. Couple more seconds is maybe all bust down needed. Minute 50 seconds remaining. Payload moving pretty quickly forward. You imagine that this will be the first line that bust down kind of dig their heels in. Whirlwind is going to maybe allow room for him to get a little bit more aggressive here. Good stun. Emberfish caught out. No more Atlas in this fight for bust down. Paradago uses the Faith Light as well. Flying up above. Good King Bomb. Stuns up one. They're able to get the kill onto the Grok. They are. Aryavon is no more here. Room for room is winning this fight. They're winning it convincingly. And this payload could very well go in. I think it's worth noting. I mean, Bomb King, we saw Legends do really well on it earlier on a map where Bomb King can be hit or miss. Now it's Bomb King's best map, and he's going to sure. be coming through. I expect to see this continue, this kind of route and this amount of damage. But honestly, it's the front lines right now, I think, that are making the biggest difference. I've seen Ninjas in just get so aggressive in so many of these moments. Right now, he's even opting to eat some yep. of the damage from the Terminus because he's just so nonplussed. More reanimate. Styles is going to use that. Aryavon as well finds nothing but death around that corner. Emmerfish as well. Tough game so far on the Atlas. Valerian firing away. Plenty of damage across the board. Grover, 15 streak for Vroom Vroom. Undying yet again. Yeah. <laughs> we, we saw the uh, the story on Stone Keep. They weren't able to seal that one up. Paradago, the only one with any kills right now on Bust Down. He's literally trying to do it. And he, again, the moments he's had are fantastic. The problem is, is well, 6-0 and 6 for Valerian, 1-0-14 for Kralft. So no matter what, you're, you're really in this situation where you need some seconds. assistance somewhere. Aryavan right. not doing anywhere near as much damage. Again, this map may be a little more difficult for Grok to be able to find as many bounces, find as much poke damage. And using him as one of your primary damage dealers. Like The Ice Mine strategy doesn't quite translate, I think, as fully as you would want it to. It's a bit of a side note. Very disappointed we were not able to cast a Vroom Vroom versus Grok Paper Scissors matchup because some of the best names I've maybe that seen in the PCL. <laughs> the fight does begin though. Overpower, does that hit the ceiling? Maybe the floor. At any rate though, Styles is still in this game right now. Legends finally able to seal that one up a little bit longer than maybe Bust Down would have hoped for. It's a one for one trade to start this one off. 
Bust down though, fighting from the point with fast cap. Legends trying to turn this one around. A good stun might be able to do it. Good second chance, gets him out of range. Legends finds the kill onto Dreams. No more healing now for Bust down, just for a few seconds. They might need to back off. Emmerfish finally getting cleaned up after the good second chance. Ninja with a double kill there. Room for him set up very well. Even though you get that 78%, Bust down just don't feel like they have as much to stand on. Like Atlas, I haven't seen really accomplish too much here. Same thing goes for Terminus. There's been some decent poke from Grok, but not enough. And as much as, you know, the reason I guess that you saw her pick rate at 13% is just because Saris doesn't bring as much as some of the other supports. And I feel like we're seeing that right now. And now they're just they're just tossing bodies at the point. Emmerfish tries to get in, get a touch pair. Daga with the first kill. Unstoppable goes Valerian. Good stun. Box up one, double kill now for the Victor style. Still alive, trying to chop away, find a way back into this game for bust down. Not happening just yet. Very low health bars. Basically caught in between three members of Room Froom. Naju's finally going to be the one to seal it up. Reinforcements have arrived though for bust down as overtime begins. Actually in favor of the red team. They fought themselves back into this one very well. It's going to be Naju has to get in and get a touch. Trying to do whatever they can. Dreams is going to be able to keep him healed up. So you need to target the Saris in this instance if you can. And the unfortunate part is they used a lot of their ults. Barrage is going to oh. be available. It's not going to be enough overall. Bust down still going to be able to find themselves a nice little capture. Yeah, both teams were really just kind of forced back there. Overtime was going so fast. I think they just reset the overtime timer in general. And they're able to get on the point, get themselves a touch. And now yet again, this is on, honestly the same as what I saw in Stone Keep, where Vroom Vroom is firmly in control the entire game. Bust down are able to, you know, capture themselves a point, maybe push in a payload, get themselves back into it. Uh, but this one felt more like a 3-0 than it did a 2-1. The thing that also astonishes me, one is Victor is still undying, by the way. That Savage is because he is just not going down. He is 9-0 and 11 as yeah. of right now. But he didn't use his barrage either. That kind of blows my mind, where it's just in that moment. I don't know how much it could have done for them. Sure. So maybe that's why he held on to it. But, I mean, you're undying. You're doing so much damage. There's no reason not to throw it out and just try every now and then. Like, right now, maybe you don't. But... Right there at the end of the point, that could have been the difference between just one more kill and maybe yeah. opening it back up for your team. Might have been. Regardless, though, still in the back pocket. Could help on the defensive end. They still might get point number three at any rate if they're able to defend this one. Minute and 15 is what they have on the clock. Might try to start this one off. Tempest from the Grok. Aryavan is going to get aggressive here. Bust down following through that archway. Legends able to find somehow some kills in all of this chaos. Aryavan, Dreams both going down. The Bomb King still alive here. Plugging away. Emmerfish, the next to die. Styles. It's kind of a bully in a corner right now. He's going to take the easy way out off to the side. Good defense there from Vroom Vroom. Under the duress of, uh, of a lot of aggression from Bust Down. What was even better about that is that Vroom Vroom, Naiju, legit was trying to grab him yep. before he could jump off just to keep him staggered a little longer, make it even more unfortunate. Unfortunately, they weren't able to get that the wall blocking him just enough. Of course, I also guess, guess blocking him from killing himself with that dash as well. But either way, I like the, the lockdown that they were able to do. Yeah. Bust down should still be able to group up. They're still going to have time. They're still going to be able to find themselves at, at least some overtime, but it's fun. It was fun, of course. It was a lot of fun, and they're going to look to have a little bit more fun. Ten seconds left, Emmerfish. No, uh, no second chance for him just as of now. It's going to result in his death. Dream seems like just a bit of a formality at this point. Aryavan's able to trade one out. Actually, he's still alive as the Saris. But enough uh, pressure on the front lines of Room Froom. On uh, bust down, I should say. We're able to get room from point number three, and uh, Savage is the victor. And, uh, you know, this is the barrage. I guess it was used earlier on in the fight. So I, I guess I guess it, he, they they used the barrage, went down to 41 percent on the cooldown. They only used a rocket or two, and then I guess maybe just came up yeah, towards the end of the it. mid. It's still good though. I mean, 10-0 and 13 versus your Bomb King, 10-5 yeah, right. and 12. Like the closest slash line you have is still on your team. Paradago doing as much as they can. I mean, those are some atrocious slash lines on Buzz Down. 0 and 4, 0 and 8, 1 and 8, 2 and 6, and then you get the 1, 9 and 7. Like the damage is good, and that sure. time comeback mechanic played very heavily in their favor. I think we'd probably see it again this time, but. You're going to have to have more. You needed more performance from everybody. It can't just be Paradoga. Uh, 
Using the Faith Light, Perdago is going to try to turn something around here. Barrage used very early on, but Valerian in a bad spot. Perdago able to fight around the corner, get the kill. Naiju pulls one back. Uses the overpower successfully, I might add, this time around. Aryavan with another kill in this one. And looking like a successful team fight here from Bust Down. Still some good ultimates. Reanimate. Exiles. Still uh, could seal this one up. Vroom Vroom are going to have to capture one more point and, uh, and able to get this win. I forgot about that bunny skin. I'm going to be 100%. Yeah. It does the little squeaky every time oh, no. you start the heal. Oh, that oh, no. is so unfortunate. Bomb King was probably in one of the best positions to help retake that. And now going down, this is a 4v5 just to start it off, and it's 97 to 30. Yeah, Naiju has to round the corner. Now Ninja's going to take up the mantle, maybe trading back and forth one for one. Now, though, the Inara is the last frontliner left. Faithlight just to maybe seal the deal here. Perdago blasting away. Valerian makes two. Gore, is this stone keep all over again? I mean, it feels almost exactly like it. A lot of the... And admittedly, it's a similar draft, right? Oh! Maybe even the same draft here from Vroom Vroom, but... They center around the Grover, Cauterize and Dead Zone come online, and all of a sudden, that Grover's not looking too hot. Yeah. The later the game goes, the better it becomes for Bust Down. And even though Vroom Vroom, like they're they are playing phenomenally, it feels like things are getting staggered more against them than for yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it seems seems like somehow, despite being down in the game, Bust Down are the ones with uh, with all the momentum at this point. That mid fight turning around, Bust Down on the last one big uh, in terms of the overall storyline of this game. Plenty to defend with ultimate wise for bust down. Legend started off this game very well as well as Valerian. That 1-2 uh, Victor Bomb King was just too much for bust down. They've been able to uh, kind of stall that out though. Forced back at the moment. A lot more kills that round from everybody yeah. on bust down. I think makes it more viable. Kind sure. of I think reinvigorates it. Like it's not as tedious for Paradago to be like, guys, I'm just, I'm, I'm doing whatever I can. I need a little bit. Now they're having a little bit more pressure. That's actually going to be a good Fae flight as well as Grok just being able to kind of jump around. They're dropping everything they have, and it's opened the door. Victor's just not allowed to participate in this fight, I guess. Paradago wraps him around the corner. Double kill, make it three for the Willow. Paradago trying to tie this game up for his team. Vroom, vroom, five ultimates ready. Only the Tempest and Fae flight were used from bust down there, though. Good convergence, might be able to seal this one up. One last ditch effort for Vroom Vroom to try to avoid this game from being tied up. They're gonna have to capture a mid anyway. Maybe won't elect to use too much on this one. Out and now healthy thanks to Dreams as Paradago here. No picks just as of yet, 35 seconds remaining. Room for error for bust down. No room for error though for Vroom Vroom. Legends luckily able to pull one back. It's one for one, make it a two for one in favor of Vroom Vroom. Looks like Bust Down are going to have to go waiting for their next attempt. Honestly, I think they're okay with it. And specifically, you know they're okay with it because they hold the reanimate. That's kind of the biggest key as to how aggressive a team wants to be, whether or not they, they can't touch back down. There's no reanimate. There's nothing to come through. Well, maybe they can. They're not getting dismounted anywhere near as early as I thought. No, five seconds left. There's no way. There's just no way. I just don't see it happening. Please. And if they do, it blows my mind. Okay, good. Okay. I was, I was letting the dramatic when I When I doubled down, I was like, oh, man, <laughs> if this is wrong, I'm going to feel the fool. But it's just they play really well, but this is you still get, you know, a fast cap. You still yeah. are able to stand on the objective, get 4% every other tick, and feel perfectly fine being down 3-2. And you keep all the good juicy ults, reanimate. Clears off the point. You get a convergence. That's part of the reason they won the last round. Like, I think this is a good position. The slash lines, again, they might not be that pretty, except for Pair Doggos, which is gorgeous, but they're getting it done. Yeah, I mean, it's very gritty. It's kind of like elbow grease, uh, nose to the grindstone style work. Morale boost three for Pair Doggo, as well as. Uh, <laughs> Get me up in the air and keep me up in the air. That's right. Get me up in the air and make sure that Victor can't one shot me <laughs> while I'm up there. I mean, fine with that. Look, already 91% used towards the end of the last one. Luckily, we'll come out very early on here. One shot, 2% kind of particular. I'm trying to track how often that comes out. Paradago finds a kill onto Valerian. King Bomb as well from Vroom Vroom. Maybe stunned one up. Whirlwind is going to try to stall this one out. Very split apart fight right here, but Paradago now with that morale boost. Three has Faith Light firing down upon the Vroom Vroom roster. Forced back, Vine out. Luckily, or likely I should say, is going to be a dead Grover, and it is. And Yet again, Gore, an early pick from Paradago, an early Willow pick. Sets up bust down. And it's not just the early Willow pick. 
it's this Victor. I mean, you said it last round. He's just not being allowed to play the game, and I think that's exactly what Bustdown want to do. He was undying for so long. Now he's got four deaths on his ticker, and that's just unfortunate for him. Like, Valerian is, is doing a, a fantastic job. Yeah. Now they have isolated him. Pear Doggo is getting these kills, that 19 and 8. Four of them are this Victor, and the rest of them are because four of them are this Victor. Like, he's just not able to, to deal with it. And it makes Faith Flight so safe. It was. I think he was 10-0-10 and is now, uh, you know, 14-4 and 6. So it's 4-4 four, four and 2, I guess. So, I mean, still good, but, but much more tame than what Valerian was doing at the beginning of the game. Uh, and that's really on the back of Perdago, rounding the corner to uh, 19 kills. And no game to be won here for Vroom Vroom. They're going to have to capture a midpoint, which has proven to be difficult, if nothing else, over the last few turns. Bust down, though. Honestly, could end the game here. And on it, I think they'll be OK if this one goes back to a mid. They've had, they've had it figured out. Yeah, and that's the thing I think we've seen out of Bust Down a little bit more. I mean, Ice Mines showed it, I think, the best. But game one had it because they were able to come back from the 3-1, right? Yeah. It's just that they adapt really well. And that's honestly the biggest difference I've seen between these two teams right now is that Bust Down, granted also on the back of a really, really, really good Willow performance, are adapting, I think, a little bit more to what Vroom Vroom are trying to accomplish. Sure. Going to have to use the overpower. That's one way to adapt. Just get rid of them. All right, Yvonne. Get him out of here. Get him out of here. <laughs> Beridaga is still alive in this fight. I want to see one auto attack. So four, OK, so he's getting 7% per auto attack back towards the ultimate with that morale boost three. That's kind of ridiculous. That's kind of ridiculous. That's I mean, that's morale boost three. I mean, that's what you buy it for. Yeah. And uh, it, it's working out well here. I, I was trying to take note. I mean, already 77. It was at 50 something a second ago. And uh, you, you see that every every time that jumps up, uh, it's basically one auto attack landing. And now he has it. And now he has it. <laughs> that was uh, about 12 seconds of game time. Uh, you know, every 30 seconds seemingly, as long as these auto attacks are consistent, that Faith Flight's going to be ready. And it's been so important for Bust Down to have up and ready. Health bars bouncing back and forth for Bust Down right now. 10 seconds left, likely is going to maybe go into an overtime. And they're going to have pretty much everything but convergence. Couple of exiles, a good Faith Flight, reanimate. Like, you can push to win right here, and I think they want to. It's just going to be burning down one of these tanks. If they can get rid of ninjas in, then that immediately makes this a lot easier. Everything's starting to get thrown against the wall. Vroom Vroom rolling through is the King Bomb. Looks like he stunned up Aryavan in that case. Four versus five now for Bust Down, already on the back foot. A second chance, maybe pulling things back, but the Bomb King Victor combination, too much for Bust Down to fight back through. It looks like we're going to a .7 mid. That's worth it. I mean, yeah, you maintain, because I think he only drops one, maybe two total drops from his barrage there. This is 64%. You burn King Bomb entirely. There is no Whirlwind available either. Five ults <laughs> on the side of Buzz Down, right? And like when it comes down to ult economy, they not only, in my mind, have better ults, but they have more ults available in general. I'm just looking at this. <laughs> <laughs> He's, that's the warm-up. You gotta know, I'm practice sorry. on. I'm sorry, a, that went through me. Just, <laughs> I've never seen that before. Oh, that's funny. Valerian top damage in the game still. Arivon actually Three, second two. damage wise. So despite being six and 11, 17 assists of course can't leave that one out. Pair Doggo at 21 and 10, third damage in the game. They're probably gonna throw that Faith Flight out early, given how fast it charged. Uh, there you go. Thank you very much for that one. Tosses down some good damage. Not going to be able to charge that up while he's up in the air. Just trying to poke down Vroom Vroom from this back line here, actually forcing him out. Bust down, though, fighting from the point now. Vroom Vroom are going to have to fight back into it. Emmerfish is the first kill in this one. 17% back on the Fae Flight, but no kills yet for Bust Down. The biggest difference between that Fae Flight and all the others? Victor's alive. Victor's able to poke him down out of the yep. sky. That is the one issue, the reason they've been pushing for him early on every single time, and it just hasn't been working. Styles goes down. Doesn't seem like he's ready to pop the reanimate. They don't need to just yet. That's really good to hold on to it and have it for like a 99-99 moment. But there's still, I think, the, the most deadly one, the overpower, yep. available on the other side. Can't reanimate from that. No, you can't. I guess maybe in theory you could, but it would just be off the map. No, I think you're... you're <laughs> you just, just die way <laughs> over there <laughs> You now. just die a second time. Vroom Vroom back up to 63%, 57. Here comes the Tempest trying to get something going now for Bust Down. 
No kills on the back end of it to move speed, though. Answered out by the Whirlwind on the opposite side. Seismic Crash rips through the lineup of Bust Down right now. Up and over the top goes Styles. He's not dead yet. This would be maybe a good spot for the reanimate. Unfortunately, Aryavan is not able to reanimate himself now. Bust down back against the wall. Ninja Zen gets the kill. Emmerfish is able to pull one back. There's the reanimate. Good chunk damage, though, onto the side of Room for him. Now Peridago getting involved in this fight. They're going to have to do something about this con, though. Yes, you're finding the kills. You have to get rid of Grover, and you have to get rid of this tank, because otherwise you lose control. It's 90 to 87. Wow, and they might just seal it up. Bust down. They go down yet again. Valerian's going to be the last line of defense. Wouldn't you believe it? They turn her, turn it around one more time. Find the 3-0 win over Vroom Vroom. That 3-0 is so misleading, though. That is that not is a 3-0. That is not a 3-0 in any form. I mean, that is bust down playing out of their minds. That was really well adapted all three games in a row because each one, they start off down, right. right? And it's, I think, maybe hovering too much Grover emphasis for Vroom Vroom. Sure where early game they always had control, then his cauterize comes online, dead zone there in the last one. It just shut them down. I think that's kind of where they need to shift their focus, where they shift their priority. But that was, what, 4-3, four, 4-2, yeah. four, 4-3? Four, it was incredibly close. I mean, Vroom Vroom go up 3-1 on Stone Keep, lose three straight points to Bust Down. They're able to take that one. A little bit more convincing on Ice Mines for Bust Down. And then, uh, yeah, the same, same kind of storyline rounding that final corner, 2-1, you know. Becomes two, two, three. I mean, across the board, Room Froom had potential to end out these games. Uh, Pair Doggo, I think that's the storyline to look at in this one. 24, 10, and 10 around that final stretch on the Willow. Yeah. There were definitely a lot of fights that should not have been won, especially early on, yeah. that they didn't win. But then, even including at this moment, actually, Bust Down should not have been able to get this point except for this Willow and like how aggressive they want to get and how aggressive the team was playing. But there were several moments even after that where it was just Paradago kind of cracking his knuckles and going in, making yeah. sure, like, rolling up the sleeves because he knew he was going to get dirty. And uh, and that he did, 163K damage, 2.9 KDA. I mean, I think that's misleading. Such a tough early game. I mean, his his item build, uh, the Willow item build was Morale Boost 3, Haven 3. Yeah. That takes a little while to uh, to really build up. You could tell that the, the goal was just to have as much uptime on Faith Flight as possible. Took a little bit of time to get there. But when that was online, it was something to be reckoned. And it just showcases again how good the drafting, I think, is for that Willow, where yeah. it's just like, well, I have Dead Zone, so I don't need Cauterize, really. And they don't sure. have many shields. They have Khan. Don't need to go Wrecker. I'm going to go morale boost, sure. see what happens. <laughs> and what happens is... You pop it every down. 30 seconds. Yeah, right. they, they popped it. We <laughs> saw 7% per auto attack on a, on a Willow charge. That's good. It's ridiculous. You throw it out at the, the, the beginning of the fight, throw it out in the middle and at the end of the fight. <laughs> Why not? Uh, convincing, though, performance from Bust Down. Very close 3-0. That's going to round out our European side of the day. To do that, we'll send it back to the desk. Welcome back, guys. The game is done. Game two overall of this entire PCL day. Bust Down does take it 3-0 mm -hmm. over Vroom Vroom. Very well done by them. Like, all the games were close, though. Gotta give Vroom Vroom credit. Yeah, but Vroom Vroom just couldn't close it out. Right, I, true, think, true. I think Bust Down kept drafting really good late-game comps, and Vroom Vroom just could not find that those ending games. And that's crazy, considering they just toppled the supposed number one in the region right before. Right. You'd think they'd be the team to, to find it. Unfortunately for them, not this week. So Bust Down, take it home, and this is going to be a competitive region. I'm oh, really excited 100%. for this moving forward now. I was I already excited going in, but now I'm even more so. I am too. We're going to take a look at the schedule real quick. Let's see what we got going on for today already. We have the PS4 Europe Flashpoint. Aaron Monitor, you guys saw that. Didn't get a chance to see Ariel Arise versus Stush Gaming. Cyclone and Bust Down both take both of their games, respectively, 3-0. And up next, we have coming Heating Up versus Strimix. And then to end out the day, we'll have Elevate versus Wasted Potential. Wow. Ariel Arise, Stush. Stush taking two maps off of them is actually yeah. crazy. I mean, because that makes it, for me, outside of Flashpoint, that region, again, is, is going to be competitive, too. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm also, I'm kind of happy that Stush is putting on a performance over there, because console, I... The, the, we've always seen, like, the parity from the top right. to the bottom, and the fact that that's closing, I'm, I'm excited. Right, exactly. I am too, because like if we if anything goes like how we've seen the just this current game, mm -hmm. we'll have a really, really great day ahead of us. We're gonna look at the standings as well for EU right now. Cyclone bust down. Vroom for effect. All of them. Cyclone bust down and vroom from all only have lost one game. They've all won two games. Flashpoint and EU side for PS4 being 3-0 Aaron Mounter. 
two one aerial rise one and two stush gaming zero and three after this week and stush just took two maps off of aerial too so right. again close in that region at least at the bottom eu xbox three teams kind of fighting for the top effect struggled in this first rotation it is around robin they'll play quite a few times and in fact it didn't have the best end of it this time but right. moving forward we'll have to see how they handle it and wow i mean all the, those teams it's not like they they just all beat each other like right, at exactly. the top of that that's that's awesome to me yeah it's i mean what else more could you say about that yeah. like like throughout just today we've seen really really good teams battle out against each other especially after this last map i mean like pair doggo going like 24 10 and 10 yeah like the victor just going 19 and 6 just overall great stuff however we're going to be back with north america right after this break stay tuned guys skill shot the official production partner of the paladins console league 